Hey everyone, Jackie with Full Moon Loan Designs, and today I'm keeping it kind of simple. I've got a project going in the kiln now uh, where I've stacked some offset squares, and this time I used some thick clear and some little pieces of that. So I ended up cutting uh, just about one inch squares. Some of them are not quite exact, but I have them stacked in the kiln like that. And I did something similar just with regular size, or sorry, regular thickness of glass, uh, stacking them higher. I didn't fire them like I do dots. I fired them in with a regular little fuse. And as you can see, they didn't quite round off. So I am firing more like dots today. But the one thing I want to avoid is, I don't really want to see the square from the base, but I don't think that's going to be able to be uh, I don't think I can avoid that, let's put it that way, because just the way that the glass is going to move. So I took one of them that, you can kind of see it, hopefully the camera's catching it. You can see the outline of that, and I wonder what would happen if I took it over to the lap grinder. Um, I just have the most coarse disc on there, uh, but it did clear it up. So I believe I could, if they do come out nice and round this time, but they have the lines on the bottom. I believe I could take them over. And this one I could probably do even a little bit more. Uh, but then I would fire polish them to get them clear again. So I'm going to try that. Uh, I want to make some a little over an inch. And I'm hoping that these will spread out to between an inch and a half and two. Because I do have three layers of, of six millimeter glass, the double thick. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'm, the main thing is I want them to come out round. Uh, I have stacked offset like this before for larger dots and have had pretty good success, but it's been a while and sometimes you just have to go back to the basics, right? So anyway, that's what's firing away now. You can probably hear the kiln clicking in the background. Um, once they come out, if I do see the lines on the bottom, I probably will take them over and take uh, polishing to them. Uh, or sanding to them on that lap disc just to get rid of the lines and then fire polish them. So we'll see what happens. I should be able to take them out of the kiln tonight actually because it's a pretty quick fire and they're small pieces. So we'll see. Otherwise, probably tomorrow I will have them up and we'll see what they look like. The idea for these is for those little sublimation images I want to put on and put magnets on the back. So here are the little glass puddles, dots, whatever you want to call them. They're pretty big for dots, um, but they're pretty consistent. They all come to about one and three quarters to one and seven eighths inches. I would say more like one and three quarters. So what I'm going to do, and they do look pretty good on the back. Uh, you know, they're, they're a little, you know, Got a little bit of a matte finish just because of being on the paper, but I'm really not seeing the outlines of the squares. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go print my sublimation print. I'm going to print uh, 12 pieces and I'm going to print them a little bit larger than the size. So I'll probably make each one two inches and then I'm going to cut some vinyl for the back side. And I'm probably going to cut the vinyl. Let's just take a look here. I think if I cut the vinyl like one and five eighths inches, it should work pretty well. I will check and make sure that none of these are smaller than that because uh, I don't need it to go edge to edge and I certainly don't want it hanging off the edge. So I'm going to measure these up and go print my sublimation print and I'll be right back. All right, I have my sublimation prints printed. I could have put these all on one page, but I did want to space them apart just so I have room for the, uh, the heat tape that I put on there to hold them in place. And I just want to take a couple and see how they look laying against the images. I did print my images two inches. It's almost looking like I should have maybe gone a little larger, but I think I'll be able to line these up okay. Again, I am going to put the white uh, Oracle vinyl on the back of the pieces, but it looks like if I just center these once I have my vinyl applied, they should work well. I'm really not seeing any lines through them. So even though like here's one, I don't know if the camera really picks it up. 
I can see a very faint line from the original square, but if I lay that on my image, I think it's looking pretty good. Some of them are not perfect circles. This one's a little wonky, but they're gonna be fine. Uh, if they're gonna make magnets, I think they're gonna be gorgeous. So I'm gonna set my subprints aside. And by the way, normally when I'm sublimating, I would cut away these black uh, registration marks, and that's just if I were gonna cut them out on the Cricut. I don't need to cut these out, uh, and I don't really need to hide those or cut them away because they're not gonna be on anything. They'll probably end up on the butcher paper that I put above, but they'll be fine. So I did cut some circles. I screwed up the first time my vinyl was too close to the edge, uh, so I cut some of them off, so I've, I've cut a couple of them. I've got, I've got over 12 here now. But what I'm going to do is uh, what I normally do, and I'm going to take a paper towel first. And that is just to do a fine mist of the Synthropol. The tutorial I learned this from uses Rapid Tack. I don't have that. I did discover early on that Synthropol works well for me. So I'm just going to start with maybe four of them here. And this is, I don't have the bottle down here of the Synthropol itself, it's just a tiny jar. It's just a few drops and some water. So I'm just gonna miss these all. That was probably way too much. And I am going to peel off some of these rounds of vinyl. Hopefully I can get them to peel away from the backing. Sometimes that's tricky. There we go, first one. I want to get it on there and center it. There is gonna be some glass around the edge and that's just fine. That's actually what I want. I don't want this going right out to the edge. And these are being so small, they're pretty easy to just run your thumb over and, and get the uh, excess bubbles out. I do kind of see some, but that could just be a reflection of bubbles in the glass. Uh, but yeah, I'll continue to work this a little bit. I uh, don't think I have a scraper down here. Could use a piece of something. This one might not be completely centered, but it's already so stuck down I can't really move it, so we're just going to go with it. So that is the first one. And I'm going to complete this process off camera. I just wanted you to see. I'll do one more. So I'm going to peel this off, maybe. I used more pressure on the blade, so it kind of cut through my back uh, backing as well. This time I'm gonna be a little more cautious and try to center it right away. So I will work any bubbles out of these and I'm gonna do this and get the white vinyl applied to all 12 pieces. So I'm gonna cut the camera and be back when that's done. Okay, I have applied the vinyl to all of my little rounds. As you can see, there is a bit of a border of glass around them. Some of them are not perfectly centered. I could try to take it off and move them again. I am going to let these dry a bit, I think, before I actually press them. Uh, but I am going to show the setup now. Uh, what I'm going to do is take my sublimation sheet. And like I was doing before, these aren't centered yet. I'm just getting them down here. I am going to put them over the images, center them up, and tape them down. And the main thing is I wanna make sure that my white vinyl area is, this one's got a little bit of bubbles in the center. Yeah, it could just be glass bubbles. I do want the white vinyl to cover to be covered by all of the image. So I probably could have printed them maybe two and a quarter inches just to make sure, but I don't really want to lose much of my image either. These being squares with a round magnet, but I think it's going to pick up plenty of the image. All right, so I've got those where I want them. This guy here, my little puppy dog, 
got that at the 3M store a long time ago. Uh, I just have my heat tape on here. So I am going to tape each one down and hopefully I have enough tape down here. Probably don't need to go this crazy. I'm sure I could just tape, oh, see, I already moved it. But I just want it to stay secure while I take it over to the press. I'll try just doing one side. That way you don't want your uh, pieces to move because then you can get what's called ghosting where the image slips a bit on your, or the print slips onto your substrate. But I think they're gonna be fine. I actually don't mind using a full piece of tape over them to be honest, just to keep them snug. I know I've got another roll of this upstairs if I need to break into my stash. Now I've got my heat press heating up and I am going to press, I'm gonna start with six minutes. When I made the bigger image uh, using one of these a couple weeks ago, I, I it looked okay around eight minutes. I ended up going 10 minutes. Uh, I figure on these, if I need to, I can go uh, just do a double cycle at six minutes. So we'll check them at six minutes and see how they're looking. I think these are all nice and secure. I am gonna tape that guy down on both sides. As well as this one. And there's different kinds of heat tape. Yours might not look like this. This just happens to be the Cricut heat tape. Uh, there's some I've got that's like a narrow kind of gold looking. So this one's ready to take over to the press. I'm gonna set it aside. And I'm only gonna press one of these sheets at a time too. I'm not gonna try to fit them both in there. They might work, but probably be better to do them individually. And I know some of these do look like there's bubbles along the edge, but I'm not getting any more liquid coming out. We're just gonna go with it today. definitely got some some of it again I think it's just the reflection of the bubbles in the glass um, because my vinyl looks pretty smooth on the back And when I put this on the press, I will be putting it in there just like you see it. The image underneath, the vinyl against it, the glass on top. This is how I did it with the cutting boards and with the larger dragonfly image. So those are taped down. Now I'm going to take these over to the press, but I am still waiting for it to heat up. Uh, and that'll give these a couple more minutes to dry. So I'll meet you at the heat press. While this is heating, I thought I would show my heat press. I have one from Starcraft. I believe this came from Heat Transfer Warehouse. Uh, my husband got it for me for Christmas, uh, not this past year, but the year before. And it does have lots of little accessories with it. Uh, none of which I have tried yet. <laughs> I do have like a mug press for it. I have plate uh, presses, hat presses, and so forth. I have only used it for uh, just regular pressing. It is a 15 inch base. 
So that is kind of nice. Here you can see it. It is a swing away. And right now I'm just letting it preheat. So don't really need the timer going on it. Uh, it's getting close though. It's almost up to 385. So once it's up to temp, I'm actually going to run one press with nothing in it for probably just for a couple minutes. I don't need to do a full two minutes. I just want to make sure that bottom is nice and heated. It should be because I do have it just resting on the base. But uh, I'll be back when this is ready to go. Okay, this has been heating up just about two minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up, swing it away. I'm going to put a piece of butcher paper down on the bottom. I've just got this one folded. I'm going to fold it over the top. That just protects uh, the press itself from picking up any of the ink. And then, pardon my reach, I have my tray here with my first set of the sublimate. With this and I think I'll swing it over here just have enough space here. make sure I don't pick up that plastic laminate sheet I have underneath here so I just kind of want to make sure I've got it about in the center Paper. So let's pull this over. Now we can center it. I'm going to bring it back over. That might be a little too much pressure. I'm going to lift it because I don't really want to break anything. That's pretty good. So I'm going to let that go. I will pause the camera and we'll come back and check it in six minutes and see how it looks. Okay, it's been six minutes. I'm going to take a quick lift here. Don't really want to move anything, but I do have to lift my butcher paper. It's hard. I know you can't really see this on camera. I'm looking and I can see for the most part, pretty good. It does look like it's a little pale in places, so I am just going to bring it back over and run it again. I don't think it's gonna hurt it to go a little over. Last time, like I said, I did 10 minutes and it looked great. So I'm gonna continue to press and I may just pull it off at uh, when there's still two minutes left and that would be 10 minutes total. Just about ready to lift this and pull them off. A little note about safety, make sure you have some heat proof, heat resistant gloves. Uh, these, I think they're sold as barbecue gloves. I also got them uh, for VIT, but I rarely use gloves over there when I'm pulling VIT. Uh, just depends on what I'm doing. Cane, yes, sometimes, uh, but usually I'm using tools to pull that. So when this gets down to 120, I am going to go ahead and swing it away, pull the first one out. Now, if I were sublimating on fabric or something else, I would replace my top sheet of paper or more than likely what I would do here is just flip it around inside out. Um, but it's not going to matter because if there is any ink on it, it's not going to stick to the glass itself because there's no kind of coating on there. So we are at 126, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go ahead and this has been 10 minutes. I do have a rack up here on top of the sub oven that I'm going to set this on to cool. So let's just pull these off. I'm going to bring the camera up a little bit. It's looking pretty good. Sorry for the shakiness there. So I'm going to pick this up, set it up here. I want it to cool completely before I rinse the paper and that. And I'm just going to set my other one down and repeat the process. Pretty much in the middle. Bring my press back over. 
and it's starting the countdown again. So we'll look at these uh, after they're all pressed and when I'm ready to rinse off the paper. Okay, my pieces have cooled down. They are still, you can see, attached to the paper. All I'm gonna do is put this under some water. I'm just gonna peel them off as much as I can and then gently give them a little bit of a scrub. I can also use a little bit of a scouring pad. I don't want to go too heavy with that. water not too hot. I don't really want my vinyl to get too warm and start to lift. It shouldn't. But here you can see the paper. Hopefully, nope, you can't see. Sorry about that. All the little bits of paper that I'm just wiping away. I will try a little bit of a scrubby. Here's one on the back, nice and clean. And here it is from the front. I think these turned out fantastic. So I'm gonna to continue to clean these up and then I'll show you what they all look like. So here are the blanks I'm gonna use for magnets. You can see the ones that weren't perfect circles. There's a little bit of a, you know, kind of a outline of clear glass around it. I'm okay with that. Sorry for the reflections. So that's the front, that's the back. But I think they turned out just beautiful. So I am gonna add some magnets to the back of them. I'm not gonna show that process. All I'm gonna do is just uh, glue some on there. But uh, yeah, this is combining my love of fused glass and sublimation and being able to make a project that makes use of both. So I hope you've liked this. I hope it helps you if you want to try something like this. I'll post my firing schedule I used for the rounds as well as my pressing schedule. But just like kilns, presses are going to be different. You may not need to press as long. You may not need to press as high a temp or you might need to go higher. Uh, same with making the rounds. I did a typical dot schedule, but I did have a stop on the way up at 1200. Um, but I'll put that at the end. And as always, thank you for watching.